Greetings, nerdlings. In this video, we're going to finish discussing how the neuron works. We last left off with the refractory period. Now, I'm going to conclude everything by talking about the conduction of the action potentials across the axon, or along the nodes of Ramvier. At the site where the action potential is generated, usually the axon hillock, an electrical current depolarizes the neighboring region of the axon membrane. And remember, this occurs because of the sodium and the potassium ions, and then switching different types of levels, which create different charges. The action potentials then travel in only one direction, towards the synaptic terminal, which is right here, or the axon terminus. So again, that signal is going to come from the axon hillock, and it's going to skip from one node of Ranvier to the next. So if you recall, inactive sodium channels behind the zone of depolarization prevent the action potential from basically traveling backwards. So it's not going to get sent this way. We're always going to send it from one axon to the synapse to the dendrites of the next axon until we get a response. So looking at this, right here is where our action potential is about to occur. So we have our neuron, and this long guy right here is going to be the axon. The box right here is what we've zoomed in on. So we've zoomed in on a portion of the axon. So what's occurring here is a depolarization. That's when those uh, sodium channels are opening and sodium is starting to rush into the cell, which creates a positive charge that you see here. Now this positive charge is going to create an action potential that's going to get passed along the different parts of the axon. And as you see here, these are different portions of the axon that are at rest, where we have a positive charge on the outside of the membrane or in the extra membrane space, extracellular, and we have a negative charge on the intracellular space. And that negative charge is at the resting state of negative 70 microvolts. So as you see right here, we have our, our depolarization occurring and it's getting passed on. As depolarization at one portion occurs, it causes the depolarization of the next charge, and so on and so forth. So basically, it keeps going down this axon, creating a depolarization that sends the signal down. Eventually, it will release the signal right here at the axon terminus, and it's going to go to the dendrites of the next axon. So the conduction of an action potential occurs in this sequence. We go from our resting state to depolarization, where it's becoming more and more positive. And we get to hyperpolarization, where it's actually positive. And then we dip back down, where repolarization occurs. And it eventually goes back into the resting state. So the next couple of slides are things that I want you to write down in your notebook. They're basically different phrases and terms that you need to think about, as well as some information you need to think about for free response questions. So reading this, I want you to determine what you think the correct answer is. And I want you to write it in your journals. So take a minute to look at it. So if you chose the answer C, then you're correct. You should have stated that a decrease in the sodium permeability and an increase in potassium permeability across a neuron's plasma membrane could shift the membrane potential from negative 70 millivolts to negative 80 millivolts. The next one right here is a scenario you might see on a free response question. You could also see something like this on a test, asking you what's going to happen if. So in this scenario, what would happen if you added a poison that specifically disabled that sodium potassium pump to a culture of neurons? So what's going to happen? Think about what the sodium potassium pump does. It's pumping sodiums out of the cell and potassium inside the cell. And it's requiring energy to do this because it's going against the concentration gradient of those two ions. So if you chose A, you're correct. The resting membrane potential would drop to zero millivolts because without that sodium potassium pump, we're not gonna be using energy to create that membrane potential. So all that's going to occur is passive transport of those ions and eventually they're going to level out and we'll have a net charge of zero. 
this is basically going to cause nothing to happen. So all those impulses aren't going to get sent down the axon and it's going to prevent those signals from being sent to our brain and from us to have the correct reaction. The last set of information I want you guys to think about is make sure you're able to write about these following scenarios. You need to be able to address that the speed of an action potential will increase with the axon's diameter. You also need to be able to discuss that invertebrates, meaning animals that have backbones, axons are insulated by a myelin sheath, which causes an action potential speed to increase. Remember, it's going to skip from one node of Ranvier to the next, and it's going to drastically increase the speed at which that potential moves. You also need to know that myelin sheaths are made by glia in oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, where we're getting most of our sensory responses from, they're formed by Schwann cells. So looking at this diagram, you can see the Schwann cell right here, our cell body, the depolarized regions at the nodes of Ranvier, which is where those signals are being transmitted or the potential is being transmitted from one to the next. Make sure you can explain why those impulses travel faster in the myelinated sheaths. And we've spoken about that several times. So I hope that was helpful. Next time we're going to explore what happens when the impulse reaches the end of the axon. How does it get to the next one?